Hi everyone, welcome back to another video demonstration. Um, today we're going to concentrate on doing a little video, a little um, painting, sorry, of Polpero and Cornwall. Now, I've painted this one, I've painted this one many times. Um, not this actual scene, but this painting. Um, so what we're looking for in the painting today is light, nice soft colours, um, hard and soft edges. We don't want all hard edges in our painting. We want a richness of colour as well. Um, the light source is going to be kind of, there's going to be light over here. Um, there's going to be light hitting the top of this building over here. So it should be quite, this, the front part will be in shadow. There should be a bit of light hitting the boat here. So it should be quite an interesting painting to paint and should hopefully teach you a bit. So, uh, if you think you're interested, stick around for a bit and let's see how we get on. Okay, there's my colour palette. My colour's all laid out. I know people lay their colours out differently, but that's how I go with mine. Um, I don't think there's uh, any right or wrong way, really. I'm sure others will tell you differently, which is fine. We, the beauty of painting and the beauty of art is we all have different ways of doing things. And really, there is no right or wrong. Um, and that goes with painting really if you if you find a way that you can achieve good results but it might not be the kind of normal way of going around things then just keep doing it um don't let anybody kind of kind of persuade you any different um just do what you like um okay to, we're going to start off we're going to use cerulean blue in the sky today so we're going to start off i'm just going to mix some of that let's put the video Get some cerulean blue. It's one of my favourite blues, cerulean for skies. You get it goes a bit sort of granulated, and uh, it's just a really nice blue. So we got some cerulean blue. Get all the paint off my brush in there. Give it a wash out. Then I'm going to have. What should I have? Um, I'll have a little bit of this magenta colour. Not too much of that. There, just in case I want to use it. Then a nice warm. I'll have some raw sienna, I think, for the just to warm up the sky a bit. And that's going to be the three colours for my sky today. I'm going to keep it simple. And this colour, this raw sienna, I can bring down over the page to warm up some of the buildings as I work down the page, as I work, work over the painting. So we're going to be starting with the cerulean blue for the, the sky. And then we're going to add some raw sienna in places. And then a little bit of this magenta, um, sort of, uh, what colour would you call it, sort of pinky colour? Don't know. Um... I, I'm not too specific on colours. I, I look at a colour and if I like it, I use it. Um, I don't have a huge range of colours. That's probably all I use. And a lot of these I don't use some of the time. I sort of stick with three or four colours. Um, I know some people like to have extensive range of colours, but it just confuses me if I do that. I get confused by it. And uh, so I, I tend to stick with a quite a limited palette, really. OK, so let's start. Right, I'm going to start off by using my water bottle just to miss the page a little bit. I'm painting on 140 pound Arsh knot surfaced paper. So there's a slight tooth to it, a slight uh, um, surface, which helps to, uh, when, we, when we come to using dry brush and stuff like that, it's useful. So we're gonna spray the, a little bit, just to help the paint move a bit. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of the raw sienna first. Just as well, over that building there and into the sky. I'm using quite a big brush. That building, okay. I want to preserve my whites now. Somebody asked me if I used masking fluid the other day. And I don't. I, I used to. Once upon a time I used to use it. But I got a bit impatient with it. So... I'm adding a little bit of the magenta now, just at the top of that. Now I'm just going to keep this sky nice and simple because there's a lot going on in the painting today. So I want to keep the sky as simple as possible. 
And as I work towards that raw sienna, I don't want to rub it into it too much. I want it to just touch it because I don't want it to go like a greeny colour. I'm just going to add a little bit more magenta to that for the back of those heel. I'll keep that quite fresh. So I've got the magenta now in there. And I'm just going to work my way down my page now, really. A bit more raw sienna. Just check my sky. And that building's brown through here, so we can go with that. And that roof is as well. And back here. We can warm this up a bit. As we come down to the houses, we can think, well, the colours need to get a bit warmer, maybe. So now the paint's just doing its own thing, really. I'm just letting it sort of merge on the page. And, uh, you know, do what it wants to do. We can almost have a coffee break and just let the paint... <laughs> Do what it wants to do right so i'm just adding a little bit of uh, cobalt blue now i'll just show you a little bit of cobalt blue there i'm just adding a little bit to the magenta just to uh, pick up some shadows i know there are on the back of these cottages there i want to preserve the lights and we're just doing a suggestion of these houses we're not going to be doing too much to them just put in a few windows, stuff like that, later. And there's a key wall through here. So I want to keep the background quite light, uh, not too much happening really. A little bit of uh, a colour I really like in my palette is light red because that makes a really nice warm grey colour. Now, well, I'm just going to put this shadow in now. I've kept it quite oh, a bit of red in there, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to drift it across this building here. And then across that one. It's quite early for putting the shadows in, but I just want to keep everything really fresh and simple. So if I just put them in now. It will uh, save the work later, really. The shadows on this building. Didn't mean to flick that into the wash. That, I don't know if you can see that bit of colour that flicked up into the sky. That was an accident, should have been more careful. Bit of blue over that. I am a clumsy painter when I paint and I'm quite lazy really. Some people are very methodical. I'm very, you know, take their time but I'm a bit clumsy and a bit impatient but that's the way I am okay so we just put some this is the key wall here so we're just warming the colors up a little bit at this point just to uh, we've got some little boats back here we're just painting round those now there's a little bit of water that runs through here in a minute we just want to pop that in and I'm just going to put that in with a couple of strokes and for that we'll just use some more cerulean blue to kind of kind of reflect the colour in the sky and it kind of runs through there and we're just going to pop that in like that a bit more raw sienna I'm sticking with raw sienna today 
there's a key another wall here which I'm just blocking in we're going to save the boat till last because that's the main sort of feature if you like of the painting but we've got to come back and put more washers on these um, buildings yet yeah, at the back this is just the first wash I just painted over the boat carelessly so like, I made a mistake now I painted over the boat and I didn't mean to so all I've got to do is clean my brush quickly and I should be able to lift most of that colour out just get back to where I was it has stained the paper a little bit but a bit more water on there and we can just lift that mistake out so that wasn't the end of the world right mix a little bit more raw sienna and I'm also get a bit of burnt umber here now I want to mix some of that with a little bit of, and there's some I've got some burnt umber let me just show I've got to work quickly now because it's going to dry on the page I've got some burnt umber there and some cobalt blue there and I'm going to mix these on the page together like that and then I'm going to get some cobalt blue and just mix it in a bit and I'm just going to have a bit of light red maybe Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, the battery ran out of my camera, so I had to change the battery, but I was halfway through doing this bit. Because it takes me a few minutes to change the battery, I had to finish this bit because it was going to dry. Um, but all I did, we were, we were mixing the browns in, all I did was mix some um, cobalt blue and lemon yellow just to add some greens to it um, to give it a bit of interest in the foreground, wet into wet. Um, so it wasn't much really. Um, just adding some, like I say, some lemon yellow, cobalt blue into the brown. Um, so now we just wait for that to dry and then we'll come back and we'll put our second wash on, um, which will include putting some detail into the buildings, the windows, a suggestive detail back here, maybe a bit of silhouetting up here at the background, just to bring that forward a little bit and just put all the detail in really. Um, so let's wait for that to dry and we'll do the second stage. Okay then, it's all dried off now. Um, so we, we, I've mixed a couple of colours up. I've mixed some a green up, lemon yellow and some um, cobalt blue. And some cobalt blue and cadmium red. And I'm just going to use that in the distant hill here just to suggest some trees and stuff in the background. So I'm not using, instead of just filling it in with one green, I want to make the colours look interesting. Uh, so I'm using, a, like I say, a varied mix of blues and greens together. So I'm just going to literally, so there we go, mixing the two colours together. I just want to move that clip back a bit. There we go. I'm just going to clean my brush off because I also want to, what I should have done is just soften the tops in places. I don't want it to be all hard edges. I know that there's just some little trees up here, I think, and stuff. And it's just like... Uh, just an indication of what's going on there. Try and get a little bit of texture into it. And there's a few little houses back here, which we're just going to paint around the. Where I penciled in the roofs, we're just going to leave the roof like that. That's it. I hope you can see that okay. we can come back to that could just go back in there add a few darks this is where you play around but what you've got to be careful of is what you what you what you've got to be care 
what you've got to be careful of, get there eventually, is um, not overdoing it. A little bit of texture. One little bit of texture on there, just in places. So I'm going to get my Terry Harrison brush. I'm just going to add some texture in places. Just to suggest a little bit of detail up there. Something like that. I think. Mm, not sure. So I'm going to wash your brush out a minute. And what I want to do now, just to soften this a bit, it's a bit hard for me now, is just lift a bit of colour out. Just to add a little in places. I'm going to just lift some of that out. Just soften it slightly. Maybe just up here. So I'm just lifting some of the colour out with a damp brush. Just like that. I can be a bit of a fiddler really. Sometimes I fiddle too much. That'll do. So we'll leave it anyway. We'll leave it like that. <clears throat> That'll have to do. Now we'll move on to these cottages across here. I want to kind of make the roofs a bit more interesting. So a bit of raw sienna. Bit of red maybe. And we'll have a little look. Start getting some darks in. So instead of just adding all brown to the roof, I put a little bit of raw sienna down. I've got a little bit of cobalt blue going on here with a little bit of red, just to grey it out slightly. And I'm just going to introduce some of that into that wash too while it's wet. So the two colours are fusing together. Remembering that will dry lighter, so you've always got to bear that in mind. It will always, dry, you know, those colours will dry lighter. Then this is in shadow, this chimney. So we're going to come down here. This is just cobalt blue with a touch of red and a touch of burnt sienna. So we just pop that in like that. And then we've got a shadow on the chimney here. There. Don't go too heavy on this roof because but we want to put a bit of interest on it. It's a bit too light. So we'll just soften that colour out. So in places we place we place some heavy colour and then we just use another brush with clean water on to help it move around a bit. So we've got a bit more cobalt blue. And a bit more red, and in a minute we're going to have to put a shadow over that roof. I want that roof to dry first before I do that. So we're going to get the blue, blue and red. And I just want to add some shadows down here on this roof. Always bearing in mind these colours will dry lighter. And when I've got the other colours done, these colours will appear lighter anyway. Hope so. <laughs> sometimes, I know, sometimes things don't work out. But you mustn't let it get you down, you know. Watercolour painting is, you get days, you know, ups and downs and good days and bad days and just suggest some windows here 
some active things going on. It's a very unpredictable thing. Watercolour sometimes, unless you're a master, well then I think it's pretty predictable for them. But for for us, we have to struggle sometimes to get. To get a reasonable result. So I'm just going to go in there. Okay, so I'm just going to mix up some more blue. I'll just show you what I'm doing here. Mixing up some more blue, some red. That's going to be a nice shadow, a warm shadow colour, warmish. <laughs> shadow that runs across here. Let's pop that in. Let all that merge together. chimney up here. That will do. We'll leave that for a minute and come back to it. Let's pop our windows in. That always helps things come to life a bit. We've got a bit of a shadow underneath this, um, under the gutter there, as a shadow. So again, I'm just going to keep with the same colours, so we keep it unified. And I'm just going to use a little bit of red and um, cobalt blue. It's quite a funny little shadow. It kind of goes down there like that. And we've got the same on this one. And we have a sha more of a shadow. See, I thought this shadow here was too dark at the beginning, but now you see I've had to darken it now because the rest of the painting has uh, made it appear lighter. If that makes sense. Don't know. And there's some things here. So there we go, we'll just leave that to dry a minute. Oh hang on, there's some windows down this side, down this wall here. Now I want to put those in before it dries. So I'm just using a bit of um, burnt umber and cobalt blue, just to suggest those windows there. On the gutter, a few there. And we'll just leave that for a minute. It's a kind of a shadow that runs across here as well. Just take that there a minute and then soften it up the wall so it blends in. Okay, so we'll just pause it there for a minute, wait for that to dry. I might make a cup of tea and um, we'll come back and do the next bit. Okay then, so that's dried. So now I'm just going to suggest a little bit of roof detail back here, back in the distance. Just a little bit of... For that I'm just using some burnt sienna with a touch of uh, cobalt blue. And again, it's just to give an indication there's buildings back there it's not really 
I'm just painting the shadows, I'm not really painting um, anything else. And what I do then is just go back and just soften some of the edges. When I talk about um, hard and soft edges, this is what I mean. It's about sort of just going back and after you've made a mark, just soften a percentage of the edges around there. And uh, it makes it makes it sit better on the painting. There's a few little windows. I'm just going to indicate those. Only some of them, not all of them. Um, and then there's a little wall that runs along here. Very loosely paint that in. So we just a little bit of detail back here, but not a lot. There's a few boats in a minute we'll just put in. A few little darks down there. Here and there, just to make it look interesting, if we can. There's a little bit of colour back there, like a blue. I just want to, if I just pop that in, some blue door or something, it would just help take the viewer's eye. I back that. You don't overdo it. Right, I'm going to leave that just like that. So we'll just put these little boats in, in the back. We'll get the background finished, then we'll move forward. Just going to put a little couple of little boats here. This uh, this one here, I fancy it being red. So we're just going to literally put it in quite roughly. I remember, the underneath of the hull is generally darker, always darker. We'll have a little reflection in the sand of the boat. Should be a bit cooler than that, a bit, a bit warm. I'll we'll just leave it like that. Time to grab everything and soften again. About softening those edges, just softening some of the edges around the boat. We'll come back and put a little bit of shadow down that side when it's dry. Um, yeah, we'll have this boat here. So it's sort of like a, a greeny colour. There's some red anti fouling on the boat. Well, it's got a little sitting on some little bilge kills. There we go. There's another boat back here. And we'll come back and we'll put some masts in and things like that to make it look. Some little boats back there. So it's all about just softening it in the distance, softening edges and making it so it all sits back. You don't want it sort of um, coming too far forward and, and conflicting with what you're doing here. So it's all about lots of hard and soft edges, a few hard edges, a few soft edges um, around whatever you're painting just to help it all blend in. OK, well, we'll leave that for a bit and I'm going to move on to this wall and, and sort of go around this area of the painting now. Okay. Okay. Right, for that I'm just going to keep my palette simple, a bit more raw sienna. I might have some cold um, cerulean blue because I quite like that. It makes a nice sort of greeny brown colour. That's quite nice for key walls. I've got some red, I've got some blue. I can mix all those co colours together and use them to sort of like build up the colours in the wall. And the, the, the textures and stuff. Okay, so 
here's the wall want a bit I want to have it quite defined down this edge so people know exactly what it is there's a set of ladders there ladders so I've got to put in afterwards I'll put them there are sort of rusty old ladders let's take that people climb up to get on the key All right, so now I want to introduce, I've got lots of warm going on there. So as we come down to the water, too much blue, look. As we come down to the water line, I want to just add some cooler colour. Not the water line, the, 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 where the water comes, you know, over the rocks there. It makes it go a bit dark. But we want to kind of stay away from blacks and those sorts of things. We just want to have it so also. Now I've got that line there, that line's too hard. So we need to soften it in places so the colours run down. We've got a bit of a reflection going on because the sand would be quite wet there. And we'll just live with that for a minute. Come back and play around with it before it dries. And we've got this, the same down here. A bit more burnt sienna. What would we do with that burnt sienna? I imagine a lot of people live with it quite well, without it quite well. Right, so now we're going to have this part of the wall. There's some little posts here which I want to paint in. I'll try and get the perspective right on it. It's obviously coming up a bit as we go further this way. I'm being careful here just to paint around the boat because I want that boat to really stand out in a bit. There we go. Now we get some blue and some red, just to cool it down a bit down here. Just where the bottom of the wall is. Let's go down just a little bit further. Okay, now before that dries, Again, I need to go back into these posts and, and, and pull those out a little bit. So for that, I'm just going to use some burnt umber and some ultramarine. I might just put a top a bit of red in there, make it really dark. Avoiding black. And that's just sort of like putting the shadow side down these poles where the boat's so the boat, boats don't sort of smack up against the uh, side of the key. There's one down here. Okay. So they'll just blend in. Now see that I can just leave them to do their own thing. Really, they'll just gradually as that since that wash is wet around them, that the, the, that will just sort of bleed into the side and soften their own edges. You'll get a nice mix of hard and soft edges there. Okay, there's some steps that come down here. Probably a bit too wet yet to indicate those. There's a little bollards on top of here. And there's some ladders which I can only put in when it's dry. Back here, there's some bits and bobs going on. I'm not going to bother putting people in here. It's the painting's too small, and my style of painting because it's kind of <laughs> big and bulky in the sense that I don't do fine, refined shapes necessarily. The the people would get lost, I think. So uh, just extend those posts a bit higher there. Okay. There's a few 
few bits that are going on there. Got a door there. Okay, so now we have to look at this area down here. Well, we'll say what we're going to do. We're going to look at the boat. That's what we're going to do. Now, what colour should we have it? We're going to have a white boat, white hull, and red anti fouling. So let's make that nice red. Put a bit of burnt sienna in it. We're going to have a wash of colour over here. A bit of blue as well. That's on the shadow side. Of the boat. So I'll just leave that. It's a bit of a the rest will make sense in a while. Got the, the hull here. So lift that colour, I don't want to bleed too much into it. There we go, that's fine. So we're going to now, I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue to that mix, the red for the anti fouling, so I can have some shadow area. I want to have it nice and dark under here. On the back. Something like that. Now I'm going to get a finer brush. In fact, I'm going to get a rigger. If I can find it. And I'm going to take a bit of blue. That's a bit of blue on here. And just draw that around the edge. The rudder that comes down here. We'll eventually we'll sit make this sit better on the beach in a minute just by putting some washes down here to help it sit in. And we've got this leg that comes down here that's supporting the boat, stopping it from falling over. Kind of plank built, so just a few of those. Right now, we need to put some shadows in. So, just going to mix some that mix I've been using for the underneath of the boat. I just added some cobalt blue into that, a bit of yellow, and all sorts of things. And I just want to make some nice shadows because all this would be in shadow. So it all blends in together. So a little bit of green to that. It's nice, I like it. Okay. So we're just going to pull this shadow out onto the boat, reflect kind of like a shadow this way, 
and there'll be kind of like a reflection this way. The light's just coming over the top of here. It's going to be under here and kind of under two ways. Down that side. There we go. And then we're going to get a little bit of raw umber. Just for the windows. And that door there, the window there, and that's about it. Oh no, we've just got to put the. Uh, always forget this bit. The, there's some stanchions that come. The back, like so. And again, they don't have to stand out too much. Just if people are looking for it, they'll think, "Oh yes, I know that." Then we'll have the mast comes up there. Basically, what I'm trying to do is keep all my stroke, the strokes nice and loose and free, because that's how I started off the painting. So that's how you've got to carry, kind of carry on with it. Um, if you if you swap sort of ideas halfway through, then it won't look right. It's either got to be loose or it's got to be tight. You just say either are great, but you need, just need to decide at the beginning what, in what style you're going to paint your picture. But there we go. So we'll just let that dry for a minute, then I'll just put the finishing touches on and we're done. Okay, we're just going to put the um, the mar the uh, sail on the mast just to indicate that, and I'm just using a bit of very thick paint now, uh, almost pure red, uh, light red, just to suggest the mast because it's quite dark there, it wouldn't be seen, and I'm using some light red there as well. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my rigger now and put some of the finer work in. Um, we've got some ropes coming down here to the boat, I think. And we've got the steps that need to go in the stairs, the ladders, I mean, need to go in back here. So I'm just using the rigger to put those in. There's another set over here. Now, just want to uh, get a little bit of pure red on my brush. There's some bright red up on the top of this cabin. And there's some red there. I don't know what it is. Just going to pop it on. There's some blue there too, just cool it down. I think it's some boxes or something inside the boat. Okay, go back to the rigger. I'm nearly finished now. There's some ropes. Me off there. I just have a little bit of suggesting window pane there. And I've got the one thing I've got to do is put the shadow side on that boat. Does that look a bit silly? Let's get a bit more interest. 
but there we go so there we have a, a quite a loose painting so if you, I, I really hope you enjoyed it if you did can you make sure you, uh, can you give it a thumbs up and uh, if, you, if you really like it and you want to watch more don't forget to subscribe to the channel because uh, we'll be doing lots more paintings all different sorts of things and uh, if you're keen on watercolour then it's a good place to learn I think because we do it in a relaxed way okay oh we'll tell you what we'll do before we go for those that want to hang around a bit longer if anybody has <laughs> Um, a little bit of splatter on the, just to get a little bit of texture got a bit wild there got a bit of splatter in the sky we don't want that we'll just lift that out a bit it's okay don't want splatter there then we'll have a little bit of seaweed again a good, good way of doing seaweed is with your rigger brush you know, you can just really be quite descriptive with that. And just let it dance over the page. Skip over the page and it will just sort of do random things. Spread it out a bit. There we go. Okay. Okay, I've just popped a mount, a mount around it just to uh, show you what it finished, what it looks like when it's all tied up around the edge. So I'm quite pleased with that. It was a nice loose painting. We used a relatively, li relatively uh, limited palette. How many colours did we use? We used cobalt blue, cerulean blue, uh, raw sienna, burnt umber, cadmium red, lemon yellow, and a little bit of magenta. So not many colours really. Um, we've got some lovely colours down here in the foreground. I've got some lovely blues purples and browns down here um and in the distance um, do you remember the lifting out we did with the brush at the beginning of the painting that has really worked well it's um lifted the color out and made it sit a lot more comfortably it's a lovely soft background i'm really pleased with that and we use the uh, terry harrison brush just to create a little bit of detail on top of the uh um, of, the, of, the, of the hill there with the trees just to suggest so, so people know their trees um, but that was cerulean blue uh, a touch of cobalt blue and a little touch of red and magenta in there a little bit of yellow just all mixed in together letting them all bleed in and we just suggested these little cottages here uh, we didn't do a lot of work on those let's try and zoom in a bit so we just used very well, just suggestion of detail in here just to pull out the cottages and make you know to let people know there's something going on but we were just looking for overall shapes and then we worked our way we laid these uh, shadows in here very early on in the painting um, so and we got a lovely granular effect there with cobalt blue and a little bit of light red um, again we followed through the same shadows shadows on the boat and then worked our way down so it's, it's quite a straightforward painting really um, you know, it's quite easy for uh, the beginner to have a go at this, you know, and sort of simplify it slightly for themselves. But the most important thing is what you want to make sure you get right with your painting is you actually get the right values. Um, you get the right lights and darks, because if you don't get those, you, you, your painting will look weak and insipid and washed out. It's the values that really do pull a painting together. The colour is important, but also so is the value, the light and the dark, that we, how we paint the shadows, how we put the shadows. Because it's, what you have to remember is the lights make the darks in a painting. Without the darks, you'll have no lights. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed it and it was a good exercise. I enjoyed painting it. Um, thanks for uh, watching and bye for now.